and promotion of Core Ibo values. Let's give him maximum support for the tax ahead. Good morning. Welcome to the news. My name is Chedema Orangwa. Anambra State Government has flagged off a health program to avail the Anambra opportunity to check their health or status in a terms of blood pressure, blood sugar and others. Governor Chukwu Musaludo flagged up the program called Solution Know Your Numbers at General Hospital in Nguku in Njikoka Council area. Correspondent Ngozi Obile recovered the event and reports. Governor Saludo said that the program was aimed at giving Nganambra the opportunity to know their status in five key areas like blood pressure, blood sugar, cholesterol, among others, and advised every Nganambra to assess the services free of cost in all the general hospitals across the state. While noting that the present administration has employed over 250 health personnel posted to various health centers across the state, Governor Saludo, represented by his chief of staff, Chief Ernest Ezaji, recounted achievements of the present administration within its nine months in office to include distribution of 3.4 million insecticide-treated nets, ongoing construction of over 260 kilometers of roads, employment of 5,000 teachers, as well as the ongoing One Youth, Two Skills program, among numerous others. There's a lot we are doing you know, to improve the health of the people of Panama. We are not the government that center on one idea, so we are trying to encompass all these areas to make sure that we strengthen the manifesto of Mr. Governor. People should know their blood pressure, their sugar, and their cholesterol. And this is what we call what silent what killers. We ask Nyanambra to go to any general hospital. If you walk in there, you check your blood pressure, you check your sugar, you do your BMI, that is your number. People consider health services to be more accurate. No. Health services actually should be preventive number one. If you can prevent a number of these diseases, then a lot of people will not even present themselves at the clinics with deformities that will be expensive to treat. So the government has done well. By actually having this as a manifesto. On his part, the chief medical officer of Enuguku General Hospital, Dr. Francis Ifaneme, said that the current realities in healthcare delivery has made it imperative for people to know their numbers as it will go a long way in determining the quality of individual health indices and parameters which made the event important. Speaking on behalf of other partner agencies, the World Health Organization representative, Dr. Adamu Abdunalsir, and the representative of Achieving Health Nigeria Initiative, Mr. Henry Udenengu, while appreciating Governor Saludo for giving them the enabling environment to operate by paying the state counterpart funds, called for all hands to be on deck to arrest the situation for the good of all. In attendance at the event, we are the Commission for Information, Sir Paul Ngosu, the Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer of the Anambra Broadcasting Service, Sir Chido Obidegu, the Executive Secretary, Anambra State Primary Health Care Development Agency, Dr. Choma Ezeni Umolo, former Managing Director, Anambra State Signage and Advertisement Agency, Chief Jude Emencheta, among others. From General Hospital in Nguku, I am Ngozi Obileri for ABS News. The candidate of the All Progressives Grand Alliance, Abge, for Anambra Senatorial District, Honorable Dosie Nguanko, has kicked off his campaign at Edinato Oka South Council area. A holder of the February 25th, 2023 presidential and national assembly elections. His campaign train, which visited the three communities that make up Isinata, Isiago, Ndiba, and Ntoko, were received by thousands of jubilant crowds who shouted a stance of joy and demanded for the election of the lawmaker to the red chambers of the national assembly. The momentous crowd also welcomed Honorable Nwanko and his campaign team to Mwawolo, Nise, Mbauku and Amobi communities, also in Oka South Council area. Correspondent Chibuzo Obidike reports. At each of the communities visited, Honorable Nwanko, accompanied by a former Commissioner for Power, Water Resources and Public Utilities in Anambra State, and APUGA candidate for Oka North and South Federal Constituency, Mr. Obi Wankwo, and the member representing Oka South 2 Constituency, who is also seeking re-election, Honorable Chukuma Okoye, will first pay courtesy visits to the traditional rulers of the communities to receive their royal blessings. The monarchs, Igwe Timoti Ezekwaka of Ezenato, Igwe Jewel Egwongu, 
Ogun of Umawolo, Obi Gipsi Ngosu of Oka and Igwe Peter and Ugu all prayed for the three APGA candidates and gave them their blessings. Honorable Mwankwo, who represents Njikoka and Ota and Dunikofia Federal Constituency in the House of Representatives, listed all his numerous achievements through the Dozier Mwankwo Foundation and urged his supporters to focus on issues while campaigning for him by highlighting all his achievements so far in their various communities. I was Receiving the entourage to their communities, a former deputy speaker, an Umbra State House of Assembly, Right Honorable Hafford Oseke, the President General of Isiago, Mr. Udotuku Nebedum, Ward 2 Chairman of Nise, Mr. Johnson Okafo, an APGA stakeholder in Oka, Mr. Jude Agumado, and a former member of the House of Representatives for Oka North and South, Right Honorable Anayo Nebe, vowed to the integrity of candidates, saying that if elected, they will take governance in zone to greater heights through delivering excellent dividends of democracy law enforcement agencies have been urged to beef up their operation to guarantee the safety of journalists before during and after the forthcoming general election in the country the police coming as media reports show that no fewer than 250 journalists we are brutally molested or injured during the 2019 general elections the executive director international press council of nigeria ipc Mr. Lanre Agorundadi made the passionate appeal at a stakeholders' roundtable and monetary report of media coverage of 2023 elections and revised Nigeria media code of election coverage in Abuja. ABS Abuja Bureau Chief was there and report. He said there is need for proactiveness among stakeholders to avoid the repeat of incidents, thus urging operatives designated for election duties to respect the identification of accredited journalists. According to him, journalists get attacked while covering campaign activities and in 2019, they got molested in spite of being accredited and many of these were simulated by security agents. Aragon Dade further enjoined political parties and the government to synergize so as to see that journalists are protected as their safety matters. He enjoined journalists to ensure they see their physicians before going out on the field and must be wary how they work as violence sometimes break out during campaigns. To the law enforcement and security agencies, what happened in 2019 should not repeat itself. If a journalist is accredited and is able to show evidence of accreditation, and in addition to that, the identity card of his or organization, or that of the Nigerian Union of Journalists, or that of the Guild of Editors, any policeman or soldier on election duty should know that that journalist is not a busybody and therefore should not be molested in any way. So this appeal is very, very important. A resource person, Professor Abigail Ogwezin Disika of Mass Communication Department, University of Lagos, said the work will help journalists have direction on what they should do so as to deepen democracy as the media is a critical institution in elections. According to her, it is important that there is review of what has been done and the strength of the work done. Identify areas where there are gaps so that they can be filled in order to make impact in their electoral process. She urged journalists to do all they can in their reportage to create peace that will lead to credible election. The International Press Council, which has been in the forefront of ensuring accuracy and objectivity in election reportage from inception, say they have mapped out plans to reward media organizations who are committed to boosting credible elections and gender mainstreaming. They did say we didn't have hits in, um, the, in the period, during the period study, that's October and November last year. 
um, there was no hate in them. So if we can do that, we'll reduce conflict. So it means we've been very uh, conflict sensitive in our reportage. And I want us to keep that up because we need to have national cohesion. We need peace for us to have credible election. In Abuja, Princess Ikwi Ajide reporting. The National President of African Council for Communication Education, ACCE, Professor Nnamdi Eka Nyawo, says the solution to Nigeria's myriad of our problems lies in science, technology and innovation. He says that this at the 23rd Annual General International Conference, come AGM of the African Council for Communication Education held at the Nnamdi University, Oka. Education correspondent Queen Aniwago filed on this report. The conference with the theme Communicating Science, Technology and Innovation in Times of Economic Distress, Terror and Pandemic attracted renowned academia in the field of mass communication from within and outside Anambra states, students of mass communication UNIZIC, as well as other lovers and stakeholders of education. Professor Kanyang, who described Nigeria as a country of many paradoxical conditions, being worsened by bouts of banditry and political mismanagement, can find solution in science, technology and innovation, of which the ACCE will lead in the discourse of its developmental role. This course has been highlighted the importance of science, technology and innovation in the nation's development goals, as well as emphasize on the global role of communication in harnessing the importance of STI for better public appreciation and societal application. We hope our gathering in this academic city of Oka will not be in vain as we hope to focus government efforts in applying STI in Nigeria's government goals. For the chairperson of the conference, Professor Chinyere Okonna, she commended ACCE for the choice of the theme of the conference, which she describes as the theme of the moment in the history of Nigeria, facing challenges of economic distress, terror and pandemic, expressing hope that God will deliver the nation. She further exhorted young scholars in the council, telling them to know that academics is a field where diligence is rewarded, praying that they will rise in their profession by honest diligence. So, In his welcome address, the Vice Chancellor of Namde Azikiwe University, Oka, Professor Charles Esimonel, lamented that many decades after the demise of colonialism in Africa, many African countries, including Nigeria, are still lagging behind in all indices of development, in spite of being endowed with abundant natural resources. The Vice Chancellor, represented by the DVC admin, Professor Joseph Ikechebel, however, saw the conference as an appropriate forum to come up with recommendations that could redress the regrettable situation. We therefore encourage our departments, faculties, and centers to hold post conferences, workshops, and other academic discourses as avenues for dismantling, disseminating research findings. You can therefore understand our appreciation of these hosting rights. In his paper presentation, the lead speaker, Dr. Herbert Bata, explained that science communication aims at sharing recent findings and excitement about science, increasing knowledge and understanding of science, among other objectives. Others who spoke include the representative of the presidential candidate of the Labour Party, Mr. Peter B., head of department mass communication, UNIZIC, Dr. Cornelius Ukweze, Professor Peter Iso from University of Uyo, among others. The conference featured the investiture of inaugural fellows of ACCE, induction of new members, and a playlet from the Mass Communication Department of UNISIC depicting the security situation in Nigeria. Institute of Common News this morning, ECOWAS Parliament calls for regions in the currency to promote trade.
Governor Chukwuma Saludo has come for a total turnaround maintenance of the Anambra State economy and promotion of core Ibo Valleys. Let's give him maximum support for the tax ahead. The news returns after this time now to join us again. When you think of fruit juice and all the goodness that comes in it, think Chivita. It is many years of trust, quality, and all the goodness of fruit poured into one lovely pack, specially made for you. And there is more to choose from. Whatever your preferences are, there is a Chivita for you. If you love an active life, or you just want to relax and unwind. If you are the cool dude, or simply want to try something refreshingly different, however you want it, there is a Chivita for you. Oh, ah. Yes. <laughs> Check out our new Chivita Smart Malt Drink. Energy to learn, energy to play. So, what's your Chivita? You're welcome back to the news. Reports say inter-regional trade accounts for only 10% of the import and export of commodities across ECOWAS member states. This may not be unrelated to the quest by citizens of the region to obtain the United States dollars, thereby hacking the cost of living in the region. ABS Abuja Bureau Chief Ekwi Ajide has details. Speaking at a conference organized in Guinea-Bissau by the Economic Community of West African States Parliament to address increasing trend of inflation in the region, Speaker of the Parliament, Dr. C.D. Tunis, said in spite of the political will of member states, there are external influences bent on hindering the implementation of the ECOWA single currency, hence the need to act appropriately for its actualization. The conference tagged common currency of ECOWAS and the inter bank payment system as an instrument for the promotion of regional, regional trade is the first for the year 2023 and can portray how much energy the parliamentarians are willing to put in to tackling regional problems so as to alleviate poverty and hunger in the region. According to Tunis, the benefit of ECOWAS single currency are enormous as it will end all forms of grumbling around the prices of commodity regionally. The problem is how do we move from where we are right now because the political will is there how do we move from there to the next level i think that is where the problem is and how do we also overcome the influence of people outside the sub-region because there are maybe powers outside the region outside the sub-region who are influencing what is happening in the sub-region and like i said the good thing is that the leadership the authority of heads of states are very very committed and because they are committed, I believe they have the determination to push this forward. Kashru troops present displayed their symbol of unity and commitment to building stronger regional and economic growth at the event which gathered the 15 member states in the sub-region to ensure a collaborative approach towards the realization of its goals by the year 2027. In Abuja, Princess Ekwi Ajide reporting. Listen to this public service announcement. This is to inform the general public and particular an number of state indigents that application for direct short service into the Nigerian Air Force has uh, commenced and will end on 30th of January 2023. Interested applicants are to apply free of charge online at www.ne frecruitment.mil.ng and read carefully the specific disciplines required before filling the form. Applicants must be between 20 and 30 years of age and possess the following. Credit in English and mathematics, as well as three other subjects related to their course of study. A minimum of second class upper division for first degree holders and upper credit for HND holders. NYSE discharge certificate or a letter of exemption. For further inquiry, please contact the protocol unit, Office of the Secretary to the State Government, OCA, announcer, Professor Solo Chukulobelo, Secretary to the State Government. Remember that you can follow ABS from any parts of the world by liking our Facebook page at ABS Radio Television, OCA. Subscribe to our YouTube page at ABS Television, OCA. Follow us on Instagram at ABS Radio TV. 
You can also log on to our website at www.absradiotv.com. And now, the main points again. Governor Saludo has inaugurated free testing of health or status in all general hospitals in Anambra State. IPC has tagged security agencies on safety of journalists during election. And we also told you that the ECOWAS Parliament has called for region single currency to promote trade. Here's a special message again. Governor Chukuma Saludo has come for a tutu turnaround maintenance of the Anambra State economy and promotion of core evil values. Let's give him maximum support for the tax ahead. And that's it on the news at 7. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Chidima Orangwa. Good morning.